Hi and welcome. I'm Julianne Cost, and in the next few minutes, we're going to take a look at the new denoise feature in Lightroom Classic. Now, denoise was designed to remove noise with the help of artificial intelligence in photographs taken in low light situations that require high ISO settings. Currently, denoise can be applied to both bare and X-Trans raw files. There's several different ways that we can access denoise. The first would be in the library module. We can choose the photo menu and then select enhance, or we can move to the develop module. And again, under the photo menu, we can choose enhance. We can also use the keyboard shortcut, control option I on Mac or control alt I on Windows. We can right click anywhere in the image area and select enhance. And over in the detail panel, we can click on the denoise button. When denoise is enabled, Lightroom Class also applies the raw details. We can click and hold in the preview area to toggle between the enhanced version and without enhanced. We can click on the small magnifying glass in order to zoom out and then click anywhere in the preview in order to zoom back in. We can use the hand tool in order to reposition the preview and we can see that denoise does a noticeably better job than a traditional noise reduction tools. It removes noise while maintaining more color separation and it preserves details and sharpness in the image. It also does a really good job of cleaning up noise in shadow areas. Now the default amount of denoise is 50, but we can use this slider in order to tone down or to amplify the amount of denoise in an image. One thing that I want to point out is that applying the minimum amount of denoise will not look the same as unchecking the option because some aspects of noise reduction, especially color noise, are still applied when denoise is enabled even if the amount is set to 1. To reset the slider to the default of 50, we can just double click on the circle. Denoise also displays an estimated rendering time and you're able to create a stack with the original and the newly created DNG file. All right, let's choose Enhance in order to apply denoise to this image. And as Lightroom creates the file, we can see a spinning icon to the right of the denoise button as well as a progress bar in the upper top left. We can see the resulting file has been saved as a new DNG and the file name has been changed. It's been appended with a dash enhanced dash NR for noise reduction. I'm going to tap G in order to return to the grid view. Then I'll select both of these images go into compare mode where we can see the difference between that original image and the newly created denoised DNG file. All right, let's tap D in order to return to the develop module. And in the basic panel, we can see that denoise carries over any enhancements that were made to the source image. Now I would suggest that you apply denoise early in your workflow so that you're making adjustments to a clean raw file. Otherwise, the enhancements that you've made, such as maybe your texture or your clarity, might need to be tweaked after running denoise. In fact, any of the content aware healing spots aren't rendered within the enhanced dialog while you're previewing denoise. However, will automatically update any healed areas after applying denoise. If you have a lot of spots, it might take a bit longer than that estimated time, and you'll want to be sure that you review the results. Masking will also be automatically updated after applying denoise. Now, I don't expect that you'll run denoise on all of your images, but it's very easy to batch process images. Here, I'll just select these three images in the film strip. And if I want to have control over how much or what the amount of denoise is, I'll go ahead and click on denoise. This brings up the preview where we can zoom out and then maybe zoom into this area of the basket and adjust the amount of denoise. If I choose to enhance these three images, they'll all be rendered using that same denoise amount. If I want to bypass this dialog, I could hit cancel, 
Then hold down the Option key on Mac or the Alt key on Windows, and if I click to render it, it will render it at the last settings that were used with denoise, but it bypasses the dialog. All right, let's select this image right here. I have five tips before we wrap up. The first is that you can't apply denoise on an image that has already had denoise applied, although you can return to the original RAW file and then apply denoise using different settings. Second, all of the legacy manual noise reduction features are available if you want to add additional noise reduction either globally or locally. All right, third, if the image looks too smooth after applying denoise, you can always use the grain slider in the effects panel to just add back in a little bit of grain to your image. And fourth, Currently, you can't use denoise on images that are created by photo merge, but you can run denoise on the individual images before you run them through photo merge to make your HDRs or panoramas. And number five, denoise and super resolution cannot be used together at this time. However, you can first run denoise on any bare or Xtrans raw file, then export the results to an output referred format such as a TIFF file, and then run super resolution on that TIFF file. I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.